Hey, welcome to our special coverage of astronauts' first day on China's space station. I'm Li Qiuyuan. Shenzhou 12, which is Chinese for divine vessel, was successfully launched from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center last Thursday. The three Chinese astronauts were taikonauts aboard the Nie Haisheng, Liu Boming, and Yang Hongbo. Now, the space flight took about six and a half hours. The three men entered the core module Tianhe, or Heavenly Harmony, three hours after Shenzhou docked with it. The mission aboard the module, in low Earth orbit, is the third of the 11 missions to complete the construction of China's space station. And today, we'll be talking to Mr. Xu Yansong, who is the Director General of the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, for more details on life in space. Thank you so much for joining us. But first, it's been a week since the launch, and the Taikonauts are maintaining a schedule that's synced with Beijing time. Now, they start working at 8 o'clock in the morning and report their conditions to the control center. They have been unpacking the supplies shipped to the space station by the Tianzhou 2 cargo spacecraft. The cargo ship was launched late May, and it transported nearly seven tons of supplies. Well, the three Chinese Taikonauts day in the Tianhe core module of China's space station marks several firsts for the country's space program. They are now inside the module following the Tianhe core module's first autonomous rendezvous and docking with a manned spacecraft. The process took about six and a half hours to complete, and it marked the first entry of Chinese astronauts into a space station of their own. Once inside the module, their first activities were to take care of basic tasks such as setting up the oxygen generator and installing the water tank. Now, they also arranged the rest area for their first sleep in the space station, and they connected the module's Wi-Fi for the first time. Now, the equipment for establishing wireless network weighing about six tons was earlier carried to the space station by China's Tianzhou 2 cargo ship. Now, Shenzhou 12's launch has caused a stir among analysts and experts globally. Have a listen. China now has all the capacity to develop this space exploration technology on its own. So this is something admirable, especially if we take into account that China launched its first manned mission in 2003, then less than 20 years ago. These are very exciting times for the Chinese space program, and it's incredible uh, to be able to have this additional capability in Earth orbit, in addition to the International Space Station, to open up this kind of exploration to everyone. People should remember that this is not their first space station, this is their third space station. So they've been practicing at this, working out a lot of the details. That's exactly what we did in Apollo. You know, we flew uh, Mercury and Gemini and worked our way up, et cetera. It's a steep learning curve, but you know, you have to learn these lessons and China has been doing that very well. And joining us in the studio today is Mr. Xu Yansong, again, Director General of the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization. Great to be with us, as always. So we've got three astronauts up there, Tang Hongbo, Liu Boming, Nie Haisheng. It's their seventh day there on the space station. Everything going so far so good on schedule? Well, I think uh, they have had a, a great ride to the station a week ago, as you said, and they had a also to uh, synchronize with the Beijing time uh, for, uh, for their daily activities. And they're doing a lot of unpackings and, and unwrapping. So uh, I think everything went well, and uh, they're ready to communicate with the ground. And uh, that's um, uh, one of the uh, historic points that we're waiting for, so that uh, uh, well, they are getting used to the life on board the station. A uh, couple of them have been there uh, many times, uh, I think one time or twice and they know how it feels to be in the station. But, uh, but this time they have, they have more rooms and more spacious uh, infrastructures and more, more toys to play with, uh, <laughs> including communications, uh, Wi-Fi's and uh, life support system. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, their mission is to test and validate all these new technologies, in, in particular for sustained duration of their stay. Mm. And what's next, I mean, on their to-do list? Well, they have uh, quite a few uh, missions to, uh, to prepare. Uh, there, there are a number of scientific payloads that have to be unwrapped and, and press the button and monitor. And they also have to validate all the life support systems, including uh, ventilations, uh, air recycles, uh, and 
detoxications and also water uh, cycle systems. So all of this has to be uh, done in a systematic way and they've already had a, a book logbook to follow, uh, including a lot of activities. Now, of course, they also have their leisure times and they can, they can spend a few minutes uh, uh, you know, uh, at their own private time. That's always nice. What about those EVAs, extravehicular activities? I mean, spacewalks are always exciting. Yes, uh, spacewalks are very complex missions and of course you have to be uh, well prepared for this uh, activity and also to validate also the airlock um, which is uh, currently using one of the uh, berthing uh, point, port for, for uh, EVA activities. Uh, now EVA is not a, an essential part uh, of, uh, of their, uh, you know, uh, uh, initial stage. Uh, they have to make sure that the internally all the stations are functioning well and also uh, to test all the uh, facilities and equipments. So inside the, uh, the capsule activity is very important and uh, they have to well prepare everything before they go out of the capsule. Of course they will have to uh, to do that and in, in the condition that uh, we're building the station from inside and also from outside. Mm -hmm. But unessential EVA are not required at this moment. And of course, they, they need to, you know, what they need to do is to validate the Tianhe capsule uh, very thoroughly for all the technologies are running well and also redundancy system are, are operational mm -hmm. so that they have uh, everything they need in, in their hand first mm -hmm. before they go out. And a bunch of international cooperation projects, science experiments are also being brought by the astronauts to space, right? Did they have the time to get on them, get started on that? Yes, those experimental parts, some are went with, uh, with the Tianhe capsule, others are coming up with the cargo ships. As you probably know, the next mission is another cargo that is going to go to the station, uh, replacing this one, because this one they have to also put the waste of the station after refueling and taking all the cargoes inside Tianhe uh, so that uh, this, this uh, cargo ship can, can re-enter the atmosphere and burn up uh, by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then the new capsule will come and also with the experiments that has been collected on the international uh, platform which is UN USA, we call it USA Office for Outer Space Affairs mm -hmm. that is part of the UN function and then they have selected nine projects out of the criteria that they has to be uh, uh, unprecedented at the first time and innovative. So those uh, cargoes will go up and then the astronauts will unload those cargoes and put in the station and power them up for the experiments. All right, Mr. Xu, stay with me. We have more questions for you, but before that, during their stay, the astronauts will carry out a series of technical and scientific operations. The station is equipped with Wi-Fi, even a robotic arm, which will help the astronauts handle heavy equipment and conduct activities outside the module. And the three men will also be able to enjoy as many as 120 different kinds of food up there. And here's a look at what they can see from the station. A magnificent view of space captured by Tianhe, the largest spacecraft developed by China. And inside the vessel, tech canals are provided with six areas for work, sleep, sanitation, dining, healthcare, and exercises. The dining area features a retractable table and equipment to heat or refrigerate food, supply drinking water, while a treadmill and a bike are in the exercise zone. We are going to decorate this home in the next week with more pieces of equipment to ensure their life and work go well. The tech analysts have already set up Wi-Fi in the spacecraft, so now they can easily control cabin lighting and track inventory. They can also communicate with people on Earth via video calls and email. Every morning, just like they do on Earth, they communicate with the center and also in the evening, so we can sync their schedule with that of Beijing. To provide a safe and comfortable environment for the technauts, Tianhe is also equipped with air conditioners to ensure the temperature, humidity, and working temperature of equipment are within the appropriate range. The three men have a list of tasks to perform, including transporting goods and materials from the cargo spaceship, verifying the life support system, managing modules, and operating mechanical arms. They will also conduct in-orbit maintenance, space experiments and tests, as well as perform activities outside the vehicle. Zheng Chunying, CGTN. 
If you're just joining us now, you're watching our special coverage of China's space station. Momentarily, the three astronauts on board the Tiangong station are going to make a video call to the ground, and Chinese President Xi Jinping is expected to talk to them. The three astronauts on board are Ni Haisheng, Liu Boming, and Tang Hongbo. And when that happens, we're going to bring it to you live. The state of art technology is making life easier for the three technauts, and to ensure safety, it was thought the men would need to take turns at night shifts. But space officials now say there's no need, as a new type of acoustic and photoelectric alarm system will alert them if anything is amiss, so they can now rest well in outer space. And in an interview with the chief designer of the astronaut system of China's manned space program, we find out how the Taikonauts were selected for this important mission. Xin Renan has more. For its longest crewed mission to date, China sent three Taikonauts into orbit. Nie Haisheng, the mission's commander, is a 56-year-old veteran making his third trip to space. Liu Boming, 54, did China's first ever spacewalk in 2008. Tang Hongbo, 45, is from the second batch of candidates who is now on his maiden flight. So why have they been chosen? Huang Weifen, chief designer of the astronaut system of China's manned space program, cites the strength of each. Ni Haisheng can deal with all kinds of problems calmly, so as to stabilize the situation, which is very important. Ni has the experience of conducting manual space docking, and this is very important. And Liu Boming once helped his teammates Jai Zhigang perform a spacewalk during the Shenzhou 7 mission. Therefore, Liu has the experience of extravehicular activity. Tang Hongbo, a member of the second batch of Chinese astronauts in 2010, was also selected in a Shenzhou 12 space crew. Tang was selected as a backup crew member for the Shenzhou 11 mission, which shows that Tang performed very well. These three astronauts performed very well based on our early observations. Chinese astronauts are mainly selected from outstanding pilots. However, Taikonauts need to undergo extreme tests, stimulating the special environmental factors they will be subjected to in space, such as weightlessness, low pressure, and working in confined dark spaces. All of these challenge human physical and psychological limits. The astrovehicular activity is a great challenge for the astronauts, so we strengthen their physical training and strength training, including their upper body and core strength. The three men have undergone more than 6,000 hours of training, including hundreds of underwater somersaults in full gear, to get accustomed to their suits for spacewalks. Xin Renan, CGTN. All right, Mr. Xu, we're sitting by for that ground to space call between the president and three astronauts. And you earlier mentioned that there's a small window, really, for such a ground to space call to take place. Exactly. This uh, space station is flying at an inclination of 41 degrees. That is the angle between the equator and the flight uh, plane. <laughs> Uh, and also the altitude is about 400 kilometers. So it has a window of flying by uh, over the head of, of Chinese territory for about 20 to 30 minutes. So it's a, it's a window that you communicate with the ground. Uh, using that opportunity, of course, uh, that happens uh, uh, on a daily basis, but uh, you have to use uh, state-of-the-art technology to communicate with the station because you have to track this, the station because it's constantly flying over you. Right, and they can see 90 sunrises right during a day and 54 sunsets during a day. Oh yeah, it was, uh, it was theoretically it was uh, it was the case. Uh, so because uh, the, it flies uh, around the Earth some 92 minutes or 96 minutes uh, per round, so you have uh, quite a lot of sunrise and sunset and spectacular views on, on board the station. 
Right, and talk to us about living in space for a while. We're talking about a long durational stay. They're going to stay there for three months. What kind of uh, impact will that have on the astronaut's body? Well, we have no, we normally have a, a ground testing facility that you lie people down for uh, months. Mm. Uh, for example, a six degree inclination, your head down. So you, you're lying in that position, you're losing a lot of bone mass, uh, muscles, and you become very weak. So uh, that, will, that would occur only a couple of weeks into the test, uh, the, what we call a bed test. So uh, the astronauts, when, once they're in microgravity environment, their strength is not required, and so is their bone mass. Mm. So they lose them automatically, and also they have cardiovascular weakness, so uh, the constant exercise is, is required for astronauts on daily basis because that is why they put the uh, extra facilities like the uh, uh, treadmills, treadmills and, and exercise bikes, yeah, pedaling yeah. bikes yeah. so that they have to do this on, on, a, uh, on a regular basis so that they can maintain the strength and the mm -hmm. core strength as the uh, uh, experts have just mentioned mm -hmm. that is very important for EVA activity which is challenge challenging for their body strength. Because, uh, because of the EVA uh, challenges, they have to do a 10 meter uh, water tank uh, simulations. And uh, last, time, last time you did mention about uh, how to simulate microgravity environment. Yeah. And I missed uh, two points. That you can also have a drop tower. Uh, but that was for short, short duration. But you, you still have microgravity environment. It's like a roller coaster that you drop down. Right. And another way of uh, simulating a, 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 a relatively longer period of microgravity environment is what we call a parabolic flight on a plane. So that planes takes off and have a parabolic flight and then you, you have microgravity environment inside the plane. Mm. So that is also what we have been doing some, some of the scientific experiments. Mm. But that was only for a short period of time. As I mentioned, the station is a sustained microgravity environment. So the, the effect to the body is, 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 um, uh, is phenomenal. Mm, but it's good they have well, two hours a day to work out, so that's nice. Uh, what about food in space? We've just mentioned in our report they have more than 120 types of food up there. Last time you mentioned food tastes different in space. And we've also noticed a lot of Sichuan food is actually on the menu, right? Gong Pao, Gong Pao chicken, Gong Mao Ding, or Yuxiang Rou si fish flavor shredded pork. But interestingly, none of the astronauts are actually from Sichuan province. So it has to do with what types of food are suitable to go into space, right? Yeah, the, the uh, food that they put into the station is basically sanitated and, and dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So lots of uh, process has gone into the food preparations uh, for, for a longer period of time so that they can still use it. And, and eat it. Uh, so the food has been kept in a, a minimum uh, quantity or required quantity that they can just maintain the bodies because of the the weight that they can carry uh, to stay to, to space is very expensive. So the mm. food has to be constrained compact. and controlled and compact in a, in a different uh, smaller sizes. Mm. But uh, once in the station, you have to uh, you can recycle the water and you can use water to to hydrate some of the food mm. and it will, it, will, it will have a good taste. And of course, uh, uh, China is a diverse uh, country. We have different flavors of food and it's very much inclined to the astronauts, which kind of food they, are, they, are, they prefer. Mm. And this is, uh, this is done in their training center because they stay there for years and they, they, uh, the, the chefs know how, how, how their taste is. Mm -hmm. So these three astronauts are two from Hubei and Hunan, one from uh, the Northeast. Yeah. So I think they have different flavors and they can always use the food to adjust their, uh, their tempo and mode. Just want to let our viewers know you're now watching the live picture from the Beijing Aerospace City. We're standing by for a ground to space or earth to space video call made between uh, the president. So the president is about to call the three astronauts on board the Tiangong station. And when that happened, uh, we're going to bring it to you live. So, Mr. Xu, who gets to decide uh, the menu? I mean, do they get to bring their own snacks? I mean, I've learned that uh, astronauts on the International Space Station, they get to... Oh, I'm sorry, we're hearing words that uh, momentarily uh, President Xi Jinping is about to make his way into the control center. Uh, and again, you're now watching the light picture from the Beijing Aerospace Flight Control Center. 
Um, the president uh, will be given a tour, as we've learned, at the Flight Control Center and given a chance to look at the Tiangong Space Station orbiting in space and uh, its flat status. So Beijing Aerospace Flight Control, there you see Chinese President Xi Jinping emerging. Now he is accompanied by senior Politburo members and officials from the military. There you see Han Zheng, Vice Premier, and uh, Liu He, Vice Premier of the State Council. Mr. Ding Xuexiang, senior Politburo member, and also Xu Qiliang, Vice Chairman of the Central Military Commission, and Mr. Wei Fenghe, Minister of National Defense. Uh, they are all there about to witness history being made, a ground-to-space video call between the president and the three astronauts. And Beijing Aerospace Flight Control Center is actually the command center for the Chinese space program, which includes the Shenzhou mission. There you see President Xi Jinping taking his position, observing the flights in orbit now. That's the vice premier of the country, Mr. Han Zheng. There you see the two astronauts there. Let's listen in. Welcome to your Let's mission. This is the ground control center for the space flight mission. On the screen ahead of us, or the middle screen, you are seeing the real-time image from the cabin. Right now, the astronaut Liu Boming and Tang Hongbo, they are inside of the module. They are actually assembling and testing the astrovehicular spacesuit. From the left side, for the screen, it shows astronaut Nie Hai Sheng is inside of the camp camping. He is conducting the operation and start to operate the robotic arm for the astrovehicular activities. On the right side of the screen, you are seeing the real-time image outside of the module. Now you could see the length of the robotic arm is 9.5 meters. It will help for the assembling and will support the astronauts to conduct astrovehicular activities. For the other screens, there are some of the calculations and data of the space flight. From the left screen, you could see for the complex is operating and within the tracking of the intermediate satellites. On the right side of the screen, you are seeing some of the 3D image. So by all the information, you could see the Shenzhou 12 and also you could see the Tianzhou cargo ship and the complex is in stable condition. Please check the assembling status. Please check the size of the inner part of the space suit. Shenzhou 12, this is Beijing. Please prepare for the video call with General Secretary Xi. All right, you're now watching the live picture. This is coming from the Tiangong Space Station. In just a few moments, the three astronauts are going to make a video call to the ground, and Chinese President Xi Jinping is going to talk to them. I mean, it's kind of a tradition for a sitting Chinese president to speak to Chinese astronauts on active duty in space via such a video call. As you can see, the two astronauts, uh, three astronauts are making their way to position, ready to make that video call. Uh, president Xi has actually done such a call twice before. Uh, former President Hu Jintao has done so too. They were all together six missions before this one. Chinese presidents actually talked to Nie Haishe on another mission. I believe it's Shenzhou 10 mission uh, back in uh, 
a couple years ago. Let's listen in. Beijing understands. Shenzhou 12号, Shenzhou 12, this is a report from Beijing. Now we would like to have General Secretary of CPC Central Committee, Chinese President, Chairman of the Central Military Commission, Xi Jinping, to talk with you. Copy. Salute. Comrade Nia Haisheng. Comrade Liu Boming, Comrade Tang Hongbo, thank you for your hard work. On behalf of CPC Central Committee, State Council, Central Military Commission, and people of all ethnic groups in China, I would like to extend my sincere greetings to you all. Thank you. General Secretary, thank you all the Chinese people. You are the first crew to station in Tianhe core module. You will be staying in the space for three months. How's your work in the space and how's your life there? All Chinese people care about you. How's your physical condition? How's your life? Is the work going well? Thank you, General Secretary. We're in good health condition. The work is going well. It is my third time to participate in the space flight mission. Now the environment in the space is getting better. And for the Chinese astronauts, we have a home in the space. We are staying in the space, and we are proud of our motherland. For me, I'm the second time to participate in the space flight mission. I should have responsibilities and feel very proud to participate in this mission. And later, we will operate the robotic arms and two types of extravehicular activities. We will do our best to make sure we can fulfill all the tasks successfully. It is my first time to enter into the space. Now I'm getting used to the space environment. Also now I have a very normal daily routine. I can also have a video call with my family members. Our space family is very comfortable. We are confident to deliver all the subsequent missions. Good. We see you are in good condition. We are very happy to see you well. To build a space station is an important milestone for China's aerospace course. It will help the human beings to better utilize the resources in the space. So for the new era, you are the representative of the astronauts and aerospace staff in China. I hope you can work together, stay united, and work diligently to complete the subsequent missions successfully. Wish all of you well in your work and life in the space. In Beijing, all of us look forward to your return with victory. 
We will bear your instructions in mind. We will live up to the mission, and we will be determined to fulfill all the tasks and the missions. Rest assured. Salute. Shenzhou 12, this is Beijing, and the video call is completed. Please continue your subsequent missions. There you had it, the Chinese president making an Earth to space video call to the three Chinese astronauts on board the Tiangong space station. Uh, the president just extended his greetings to the crew, congratulating them on a successful mission so far, asking them how they felt working and living there in space. The astronauts each responded to the president a brief video call, but full of symbolism as the Communist Party of China prepares to celebrate the centenary of its founding in just a few days. I mean, this is history being made a great milestone for the country. There you see the president waving to the engineers and scientists there at the Beijing Aerospace Flight Control Center. What's your reaction after seeing that uh, video call, Mr. Xu? Uh, my, my first reaction is that, oh, of course, they're showing off their new, new space suit. And uh, they, they are also, as President Xi said, uh, this is, uh, uh, their representation is hundreds of thousands of experts behind the scene. I mean, we see three astronauts, but we didn't see the hundreds and thousands of engineers, technicians, uh, manufacturers, and supporters who are doing this job uh, behind. I think uh, this is very important reflection mm. of the Chinese strength uh, and Chinese uh, uh, competence in, mm. in space exploration and space uh, activity. Mm. And also, uh, President Xi also emphasized on international cooperation and peaceful use of outer space, which is always important in space activities, in particular in space community. International space community always looking forward to have peaceful applications in space. So uh, one of the essence that we can uh, see is that the reflection of strength and the uh, extension of uh, our arms to the international community. Right. This event really generated a lot of um, excitement, public interest among uh, people here in China, right? People on the internet have been wanting the astronauts to share everything, to live stream their life, how they eat, how they work in space. It's an event that we find national unity, a great boost to national morale too, isn't it? Exactly. And national morale is, uh, is boosted by space activity, in particular human activities. Uh, we do see a lot of robotic missions to the moon and Mars. Um, we're landing on the far side of the moon, and we have a rover on Mars surface, but nothing compared to a human space flight. I mean, you have uh, a China, three astronauts, uh, three Chinese, uh, flying above our heads every every day, and also they're communicating with the ground. I'm, I'm looking forward also to their extended activities, including EVAs, um, including also education and training programs, publications, and. Uh, also communication to the public. I think those are also very important to the to the public, to the young generations mm. in particular to, to raise their interest in space activities and to find a career in space. Uh, that is very uh, morale rising, as you said. Right, and the president's vision about the country's space program. I mean, President Xi has actually talked to the astronauts on uh, in space twice before for the Shenzhou 11 mission and for the Shenzhou 10 mission back in 2016 and 2013. So this is his third time making such call. And earlier, a previous call, he mentioned that the space dream is such an integral part of China dream. How do you, what do you make of that? Well, uh, we also, ha we always have a comparison on competition in space. We know that there, there are quite a few space powers and also what we call it access to space, which is your size of your rocket. So that de determines the size of your dream. So you have a, a good rocket and good transport and good infrastructure. You can always have good uh, ambitious in space activities. So that is a reflection of the national strength and also a reflection of the technology um, level that you have in your country. Um, uh, uh, we, we do measure the countries by GDP sometimes, but, but some of the outstanding areas, uh, state-of-the-art technologies, and some of the cool stuff they need to do 
mm -hmm. uh, in the future is based on technologies and innovations that we have. Right. So space is a good representation of that particular mm -hmm. area. So President Xi uh, mentioned twice, uh, talked to the astronaut twice, and also mentioned about sp uh, space more than 10 times right. uh, in different occasions. So those are a good reflection of your national technology level and strength. Yeah. Thanks so much, Mr. Xu. Now we want to find out how the Techonauts spend their days in space. Have a look. And now this is the first of several manned flights over the next years to finish building China's new space station. Engineers say they are already preparing for the next mission. Shenzhou 12's performance so far shows our manned spaceships have become more reliable, safer, and that they function better and more fully than before. It's meaningful for the next stage of our mission. In three months, when Shenzhou 12 disconnects from the station assembly, it will test out a docking process in the radial direction, rehearsing movements for the Shenzhou 13 spaceship. For Shenzhou 13, it will dock within a different direction and will be staying with the space station assembly for as long as six months. So they're already preparing for the Shenzhou 13 mission. That's going to happen, what, in September? Yes, they, they, this year they will have another one, uh, cargo missions. Oh, cargo and, mission is in yes. September, but the Shenzhou 13 yes. mission is in... As, uh, as this, uh, this uh, astronaut ends their uh, stay three months later, so roughly right. in three months. All right. So we'll have the 13 September. mission. But the uh, 13 mission has always been a backup mission because in case of Shenzhou 12 had a hiccup, uh, they were prepared and ready for, uh, for uh, redundancy. So uh, they were like a backup plan for, for the Shenzhou 12 mission. Of course, Shenzhou 12 was a complete success uh, mm -hmm. uh, up to now, and astronauts are flying and uh, are living in space very happily. And of course, they also have, in, in the video, they showed a uh, couple of their new toys. Uh, you can see the, uh, the new spacesuit. Um, uh, of course, uh, one of the astronauts was uh, conducted EVA a uh, uh, few years back, but they, right. they developed a new generation uh, uh, spacesuit 
And so the new spacesuit would be more comfy and they are man maneuverable and, and so that they're going to use this spacesuit for uh, future EV activities. So mm -hmm. the suit has been fly to the uh, station by the cargo ships. Mm -hmm. So they unload the suit and uh, they're preparing for EVA activity as uh, planned. And also they have robotic arms. Mm -hmm. uh, they showed the uh, uh, innovative robotic arms, how they works and, and how they can uh, couple with the spacesuit so that can have more maneuverability in outer space. So these are new, new things that they have. So instead of uh, 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 the Shenzhou 13 missions, I think they're also ha going to have a handover time so that they can teach the, uh, the new team how to handle these equipment and facilities. Oh, so there will be a time that two crews, so six astronauts, on board the Shenzhou, on board the Tiangong Space Station altogether. Yeah, that was the plan. The I think they will have a handover so that they can have a smooth transition. Uh, it's not only flying for the flying purpose. Mm -hmm. They're flying there for scientific purpose and applications and demonstration of, te of technologies and innovation of new new materials and new, new technologies. And will we be seeing foreign astronauts on board the Chinese Space Station anytime soon? I don't think this year they were going to happen, but mm -hmm. of course the, the, the first mission is to build the station completely. Uh, so this year we'll have the astronauts as well as cargo ships, mm -hmm. but the extended arms, uh, the Wen Tian and Meng Tian will be uh, installed next year. Mm -hmm. So once the station is completed and operational, I think we'll have a good invitation to the international community, mm -hmm. in particular those who have been trained in China and who has learned good, good command of Chinese. Yeah, you know, the country has this ambition to turn itself into a space power. As you mentioned, we've already landed a rover on Mars. We've collected a sample from the moon, great stride for the nation. But how do you think all this is being viewed from an outside perspective by the other countries? Well, I think those are uh, unprecedented breakthroughs. For example, the Chang'e 4, which is landed on the far side of the moon, has never been done by any human history in the, in the history of human. So we, uh, we are unprecedented, and we, we when they're first, well, of course, the far side of the moon is diffi difficult to communicate. We have to l uh, launch another communication satellite mm. uh, for that particular purpose. And landing on, on the surface of Mars in a single shot for the first time, uh, successful first time, is also unprecedented. Uh, so these are uh, a clear demonstration of the technologies that we have, and the, including the human missions, and the future ambitions are based, as I said, on rocket sizes. We're developing new generation launch vehicles. Uh, these are very envied by the international community. I think uh, uh, now we have a complete uh, system of human space flight as well as robotic explorations, and uh, many of the uh, ambitions are envied by the international community. And I think uh, uh, the Chinese space community is, is opening, is having a opening uh, attitude to mm -hmm. the international community. We, we call for cooperation on the station, and we also install instruments and facility on Chang'e missions, and we share the data along with other uh, countries and nations, in particular developing countries, mm -hmm. for their uh, space ambitions and competence and capacity building. So these are important steps that we're taking uh, to, uh, to go along with the international space community for science and peaceful use of outer space. Right, and we can surely expect a lot of uh, more exciting missions in the future. Thanks so much, Mr. Xu Yansong, for staying with me in the morning. And we'll have more updates on China's Shenzhou 12 crude mission in our later shows, so do stay tuned. But now that does it for this special coverage. I'm Li Chuan in Beijing. Thanks so much for watching. More news coming up soon on The World Today with my colleague Li Dongning.